In the first Faboyus video, we had some excellent comments. I'm sure my editor, Sky, is putting them up right now around me. Now, we came to the conclusion Faboyus is not the right name, it's Phoebus. Today, we have the Apollo, a titanium, all new diver from Phoebus. So let's check it out. <laughs> Introducing the all-new Phoebus Apollo PY-031D in full titanium. I mean full. Even that bezel insert, which looks kind of like ceramic, is titanium DLC coated. Looks great. This thing has style. You know what? The case reminiscent of the SKX 4 o'clock crown. The crown guard, of course, a little bit different, but I'm getting the SKX vibe here. Interesting, interesting dial. Tuning fork, our indices. Haven't seen that before. This one's a wild one. First impressions, this watch is cool, right off the bat. Now, they didn't tell me the grade of the titanium. However, they do say aerospace grade titanium. And usually that is grade five, but you can use grade two in aerospace. So I'm not sure. I'll ask Phoebus and maybe pin a comment. I'm gonna guess it's grade two just for economic reasons. But this whole watch is coated in a coating called Ultra Hex, which brings it up to 800 Vickers, around three to five times harder than steel. So it shouldn't be so scratch prone which titanium is the lugs and the crown guards are bold and angular looks like it's been chiseled out of a piece of titanium and actually that's exactly <laughs> exactly what happened there is no high polish on the whole case radial brushing on top of the lugs and crown guards and vertical brushing on the sides of the case giving the watch a nice raw industrial feel now the measurements that I got and I moved the bezel out of the way just in case one of those cog shaped gears interfered and I came in at two to eight and I got exactly 42 millimeters in diameter. I got 12.8 in thickness and that's a flat sapphire with five layers of AR. You can see it there. It's doing a decent job. Now no drilled lugs unfortunately and a lug to lug of 48.2. Okay, but we do have male end links here. So it does extend that lug to lug just a bit. The crown is buttery smooth. It screws down perfectly. No grit, no grind, just butter. 7.1 millimeters. So easy to grip and operate. And it has that cog wheel shape, just like that bezel. Now the bezel secret measurement, 41.9. So basically 42, exact same as the case. A little bit tricky to measure because of the cog shape. I got the top of the cog wheel and of course the bottom. If you measure at the indent, you're gonna get smaller numbers, but it's a true 42. Let's listen to the bezel. This one is clicky, but not so defined and precise. Not my favorite bezel feel, but again, it is titanium on titanium and it's tough to get right. The bracelet is 22 millimeters in diameter and it has zero taper down to 22. All right, completely titanium. Rude links, we do have three micro adjusts, fold over and dual button deployant. Even this part is titanium. You know, usually on a titanium watch, it'll say stainless in the middle there. This one is actually titanium. It's unbelievable. And there you can see that beautiful H-Link bracelet and the case back has the astronaut, the Apollo. Now Phoebus is trying to go on a new mission. So that's why they named it Apollo. I find the name a little bit strange. 
This one's a tribute to man's greatest expedition. So Phoebus says they are going on an expedition with this new model. So that's the connection. Uh, I think it's a bit strange, but there you have it. That's the name. Overall, I think the name's cool though. Apollo. You can't not like that name. Now the dial and hands. We have an awesome textured dial. Looks like fresh asphalt. Nice and grainy. And it's a sandwich dial. So there's cutouts and there's loom underneath. It's a wicked look. The tuning fork indices are very cool. I haven't seen that before. There's even baseball home plate BGW9 sub indices on the inner ring of those indices. So we're gonna see dual loom here and it's just phenomenal. The date window cutout is a little bit small. Some numbers I see are half a hair too high. Okay, so I wish they would cut that out just a bit more. There is a stepped chapter ring, so even more dimension to that dial. A very strange minute hand, just skeletonized, and a very fat, broad arrow hour hand. Legibility, it should be awesome, but I wore this a couple days and sometimes I would lose the minute hand. So I think it's a good idea. It's skeletonized and it's very different from the hour hand, easy to see. For me, I still had some difficulties. Maybe in a different color, the white one. I'm not too big on this color. I would get probably the white one. But let me know down in the comments which color is your favorite in the new Apollo line. Phoebus usually is the king of value and this one no exception. Why? This is full aerospace grade titanium. Everything from the bracelet to the bezel to the insert crown to the case back. Everything is titanium. That's amazing. This one should be light. I took out four links to size it for my wrist. We're going to check out the weight. Okay, 121. All right, that's still a little bit high for full titanium, but the watch is so big. Let's get some perspective. Here's an SKX on an Angus. 188. Yep. Okay, so 60 grams more. Now with both watches in hand, I really feel the difference. Wow. All right, there you can see it next to an SKX. And this SKX actually had loom on the bezel insert. It all fell out. Okay, so 42 versus 42 and a half on the SKX. Okay, but this one has a flat case. SKX has a round cushion case. The thickness is 13.1 on the SKX and on the Phoebus 12.8. SKX is thicker. And there you can see that lug to lug. 46.1 on the SKX and 48.2. So about two mils longer on the new Apollo. So definitely if you can wear an SKX, you might be able to wear an Apollo. It is, you can think of it as a larger SKX. Here it is on my 6.5 inch wrist. And yes, it is a tad large, but it looks great. It is hugging the wrist nicely. And it feels really comfortable at 120 grams for a watch this large. A lot of you might not like titanium, guys. When you first feel this watch, it might actually feel cheap to you. I, I showed this watch to a couple of my coworkers and they thought it was cheap, but I told them it's titanium and they're like, oh, anyways, it looks great. Okay, guys, before we begin, let's hear the jingle jangle of the titanium. All right. Okay, we're gonna do four rounds. Dial up, four rounds, 12 down to get positional variance. This is the NH35 Hack and Wine Automatic 21.6 VPH, 42 hours of power reserve, 24 joules, and it is an entry level Seiko movement. And <laughs> I think Phoebus regulates these. Look at this, 0.1 milliseconds in B air, strong amplitude, zero, negative one, negative one, and the fourth and final round, zero. If I remember correctly, the first Phoebus on the channel did really well as well. Is Phoebus cherry picking these for me because they know I do this? <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. Okay, look at this, plus eight, plus two, 271 amplitude, strong amplitude. Now the B error is perfect. There is zero and the rate has followed suit. It is zero as well. Wow. And the fourth and final round, zero. Okay. Zero seconds a day in two positions. Wow. Good job, Phoebus. 
Okay, there is the loom shot, old radium and BGW9. Old radium is usually pretty weak loom. However, I believe Phoebus puts on 15 layers. You can see a little bit of loom even surrounding that date window. All right, the Minihand is weakly loomed because it's so thin and skeletonized. So that's what I was talking about, about legibility. And you can see those home plate baseball plates on the inside. Those are blue BGW9. Chapter ring is even loomed, that stepped chapter ring. So very cool. Wasn't expecting faux patina loom to be this strong. So well done there. Okay, here it is in low light and that beautiful titanium taking on a dark gray tone. That's the beauty of titanium. Look at that, man. I know some of you are not going to like the lightweight. You're going to think it feels cheap. I just know it because I did experiments with people and that was the common answer. Now, $400, you get a full titanium 200 meter diver with good quality control. Everything lines up. The crown screws down smoothly. I think Phoebus knows how to make a good watch. This product is fantastic. Okay. And if you like to design, you're going to be happy. And that's it. And I think it has a cool, interesting dial. And if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.